Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about humans, you and I. Okay, not really just humans, we're talking about human evolution. And the question I wanted to try answering today is in regards to our evolution right now. Are we still evolving physically? Are we still changing? Are we growing bigger, smaller, or changing other organs in any way? And turns out the answer to this is a big yes. Because according to modern studies, including the one in the description below, the speed of evolution, the speed of human evolution, increased quite dramatically in the last 250 years. But let's discuss this in more detail and talk about very specific examples, some which you might be familiar with, but some which you may have never heard of before. And by the way, all of this comes from these wonderful researchers from University of Adelaide that discuss the idea of microevolution in humans, whose paper, as always, you can find in the description below. And to me, this idea is absolutely fascinating because when I think about evolution, for example, the closest thing I can think of is dogs. And that's because I guess I have a dog, but also because dogs are so different physically. The sheer number of different dog breeds out there is a really good example of how we can turn microevolution and guide it to create something we would like to create. All of these different dog breeds were guided by humans and created over a period of only a few hundred years. So we know that this is something that's happening, but does it happen to humans too? And if so, what exactly are we evolving and what's changing in our bodies? Well, surprisingly, as you can probably imagine, the answer to this is very, very complex. As a matter of fact, it seems that we are genetically mutating even right now, and we've changed a lot in the last few centuries. But unlike the changes in these birds, for example, the famous finches that Darwin studied, the unusual mutations in humans seem to be a little bit less visible or normally seen as something we should be correcting. Now, this is actually one such example mentioned in the paper. The unusual genetic defect that certain babies are born with known as spina bifida. And although technically this is classified as a birth defect, this is something that has changed over time and actually decreased in the human population. But there is a better example of all of this, something that we all have gone through, wisdom teeth. Turns out that wisdom teeth used to be extremely prevalent in everyone. And today we believe that wisdom teeth used to help humans to chew food better. As a matter of fact, when food wasn't as processed, it was much easier to use these teeth to essentially process the food in our mouths. But due to various dietary changes, our faces apparently decreased in size. And so our mouths got smaller and there was not enough space to have wisdom teeth in our mouths anymore. So they either became problematic, started to be taken out, or like in my case, never really got developed to the point where they even came out. Mine actually got stuck in my mouth. But what's even more interesting is that apparently in the last few decades, more and more babies are born without them. They actually are lacking wisdom teeth, which the scientists behind this paper believe is essentially a mutation. It's an evolutionary advantage to not have them. We obviously have no idea what exactly causes people not to have wisdom teeth, but it does seem to be beneficial not to have them anymore. And the best explanation is of course related to just the changes in our facial structure and the, I guess, decrease in size of our mouths. We don't necessarily know why this happens, but we just know that it's happening even right now. But there are a few other features they've discovered over the years, identifying certain genetic features that some people have and some don't. One of them is a strange bone that some people are born with in their feet. And this feature seems to be also disappearing with time. Another example is a very strange bone behind the knees that certain people have as well, known as fabella, which surprisingly is increasing in time. Now, once again, we're not sure why, but all of these are random genetic mutations and they might not actually have any reason whatsoever. They just happen in certain people and sometimes they take over with no specific reason. Remember, this is not a guided evolution at all. This is a micro evolution at work where certain features become more prevalent and possibly even become dominant, even if they don't really have any advantage whatsoever. And some features seem to have completely disappeared in the last few decades. Like for example, this feature right here known as the Tyroidia aima seems to have one feature that has disappeared completely in the last few decades and was actually decreasing in humans prior to this as well, which could still be present in some of the older people, but seems to be completely absent in the younger generation. And what's really interesting about these microevolutionary changes is that most of them don't have to have a reason whatsoever. They happen genetically, usually through mutations, and without any kind of external pressure whatsoever. Some of them might be beneficial and thus survive, like for example, the lack of wisdom teeth, 
others might disappear once again, which apparently is what happened to Fabello right here. We believe that it did disappear for a few million years and was absent from our ancestors, but was present before that in some of the previous generations. But the main target of this study was actually another feature they've recently discovered and analyzed with a lot of different people out there. It's a strange artery that some of us have and some don't. The unusual artery in our forearms that's known as the median artery. This peculiar feature normally is only present in fetuses and during the fetal development and disappears completely when the person is born. So essentially it's not something that most of us have. And the purpose for this artery is to essentially supply the hand with blood as the human uh, fetus develops. And then this artery is replaced by the two nearby arteries, at least in most adult humans. But turns out at least one third of people tend to retain this artery today. It seems to be a lot more prominent than before. And generally, it's pretty uncommon for a physical feature to be so different across humans. Now, this is just a genetic mutation again, and it might have a purpose. Specifically here, the belief is that it provides more blood to our hands, and at the same time, it's one of those arteries that can be used for transplantation, in case, for example, there's a problem with another artery in our body, but the actual reasons are unknown to us. Naturally, we're going to try to explain this as maybe because of a sedentary lifestyle, because we use computers and mice, but the reality is that we don't really know why this is happening. As a matter of fact, the scientists in the study believe that in the next few decades, it might become the most prominent feature across all of the humans. It might become dominant. And this shouldn't really come as a surprise because we know that there are a lot of different variations in human genes and also in human bodies across various generations and also across the continents. Like for example, lactose intolerance is present in certain populations but not in others. And it is related to a certain gene in a certain bacteria that is present in our gut. At the same time, like for example here in Asia, alcohol intolerance is very common. There is actually a very unusual gene that certain people have, and in case of East Asians, it's actually a majority of people that seem to be intolerant toward alcohol, and it's actually kind of dangerous for them to drink it, but they do it anyway. Physically, it's known as the alcohol flush reaction, and here's an example of a 22-year-old before and after drinking alcohol. So essentially, the inflammation you see on the right is a result of a lack of a certain gene that uh, certain people have. And interestingly, what makes this somewhat dangerous is that the alcohol in their body turns into a type of formaldehyde, a very toxic compound. So that's why it's not really recommended to drink alcohol if you have this gene. But what's also important to understand here is that, just like with other mutations, this is not apparent in everyone. The artery, the wisdom teeth, and of course the alcohol and milk genes are not really specific to a certain type of people or to everyone in general. They will be more apparent in certain populations, but they will be absent in other populations. Eventually certain genes will take over and become dominant, but certain genes might disappear completely. So it's really not something we can either predict or guide in any way, it's just something that happens as mutations in our population occur and as new things change in our bodies. And some of these things will actually be completely invisible to us, just like the artery I mentioned. But in regards to the artery study, it seems that this is becoming a more prominent feature for one reason or another. Only about 10% of people used to have this back in 19th century, about 100 years ago. About 30% had this artery around 50 years ago, and now it's becoming more and more prominent, with the number being closer to 35%. Once again, we don't really know why this is happening, or if it's happening in all of the populations, but chances are it's only specific to a certain type of people. And in this case, they mostly studied the European descendants living in Australia. So what would be really interesting now is to find out how many of, for example, Americans have this, or how many Asians do. Nevertheless, it's a pretty interesting study, and it actually shows you that as humans, well, just like dogs and like other animals, we're continuously evolving, we're changing, everything in our body is becoming different with time, and even though evolution itself seems like this distant concept, we are actually evolving right now without even realizing. And so in about 100 years or even 200 years, the humans living on planet Earth might acquire other features that we currently don't have. Some of them might be useful, some of them might be useless, but some of them might be something we can't even imagine right now. Although chances are it's not going to be superpowers. So yeah, don't expect that. 
But what we can expect is that the median artery might become the dominant feature in humans by roughly around 2100s. In that sense, it's kind of cool. But anyway, once we learn more about human biology or once we learn more about human evolution, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out the paper in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.